Washington doesn't have enough to talk about these days. The Washington Times reported today that unidentified White House aides in the Carter, Reagan, and Bush administrations now are being investigated for using the services of a call boy ring. The paper reports that two of the male prostitutes were given a late night tour of the White House last year. The White House press secretary, Marlon Fitzwater, said he knew nothing of this investigation. DC's Lisa Myers reports her sources in the U.S. Chris has confirmed the Washington Times report today that D.C. police and the Internal Revenue Service are investigating a male prostitution ring whose clients may have included people connected to the Bush and Reagan administration. Well, today marks 35 years since Johnny Gosh disappeared from West Des Moines, a story most Iowans know well. Gosh was abducted September 5th, 1982, when he was just 12 years old. He was delivering newspapers when he disappeared. The Gosh case is still considered an open cold case, periodically reviewed by police. 35 years is just a little bit over half my life. It is half of John and Noreen's life that they have been looking for their son. Gosh family friend Ron Sampson woke up today feeling sad. He'll never forget that morning 35 years ago in West Des Moines when 12-year-old Johnny Gosh vanished from this street corner near Valley High School. The rubber bands from the Des Moines Sunday Register and the wagon he carried the newspapers in, the only evidence he was here. It's something that's embedded in our generation's minds and hopefully we'll pass it on to the kids that are now raising their kids. Samson wrote about the Gosh case for the West Des Moines Express newspaper back in the 80s. He became friends with Johnny's parents, John and Noreen. I think that our son was taken off the corner of 42nd and Marcourt. I don't believe for one minute that he ran away or walked voluntarily with anyone. He just wouldn't do that. Day after day, police and volunteers searched for Johnny, but the days turned into weeks, months, and years. Theories of kidnapping and sex rings have come and gone. The case even inspired the first missing pictures on milk cartons, thanks to Anderson, Erickson, Derry. That's the incredible thing. After 35 years, there is not clue one. Still a very much active case. West Des Moines Police Spokesman Sergeant Mike Impolo says the department still receives tips in the case, but nothing yet to solve the crime. We still follow the leads on this case just like we do every other, even like we did back in 1982. John and Noreen Gosh have long been divorced, but still hope for an end to their son's disappearance. And they aren't the only ones. For John and Noreen's sake, I hope that there's a resolution. For all of our sakes, I hope there's a resolution. For the last seven years, I've been investigating the cover-up of a child prostitution network centered in Nebraska. The guy who spearheaded the abduction of Johnny Gosh was affiliated with this ring. Hey, how you doing? Come on in. Pitched to Rolling Stone, Harper's, The Atlantic Monthly, Vanity Fair, The New York Times Magazine. Everybody uh, thought I was crazy. Come with Noreen Gosh. They had Johnny in an abandoned house outside of Sioux City, Iowa for about 14 days. And then a man came from Colorado who they called the Colonel, paid the kidnappers, and then he basically bought Johnny. What kind of things was Johnny involved in? Prostitution, pornography pictures, molesting other kids at gunpoint like Paul did. Two years ago, a convicted child molester surfaced and said he helped kidnap Johnny. He told an incredible tale of an underground network of adults who kidnap and sell children for sex. Noreen decided to meet him face to face to confront the person who says he helped kidnap and sexually assault her son. Fanasi claims that an organized ring of pedophiles abducts children and forces them into a life of child pornography and prostitution and that it happened to him. And they force you to do things and, and they, they photograph it, they, they film it. The whole purpose for that is to either blackmail you into staying with them or split your mind up so that you don't even remember who you are. The FBI has been informed as to everything that has come out of Benassi's mouth and that was done by his attorney, John DeCamp. I submitted it to them and it was like a, a forbidden zone I'd entered where they won't even communicate on it or talk to you or even reply. The reason the FBI won't discuss Benassi is that they feel he is an uncredible witness. 
because of his role in a sex scandal that rocked Omaha. In 1989, the Franklin Credit Union scandal burst into the headlines. Paul Benassi was one of the witnesses who made shocking allegations of child sexual abuse by some of Omaha's most influential citizens. Welcome back, everyone, to the Deedal and Daniels Show. This is a story 20 years in the, 23 years in the making. On our first show, we told you about a missing Iowa boy, Johnny Gosh. He was kidnapped back in 1982. His mother, Noreen, was here to tell her side of the story. You are obsessed with the story, I know. Today, we have the man who may know what happened to little Johnny. Some claim that former White House reporter Jeff Gannon may actually be the missing boy. So right now, let's take a look back at how the story got started. Johnny Gosh vanished from his West Des Moines, Iowa neighborhood without a trace. The newspaper delivery boy was on his morning route when he disappeared. One theory, the boy was kidnapped sexually abused, sold into a child sex slavery ring, and brainwashed by the CIA. Some claim Gosh was snatched for the Monarch Project, a government-sponsored mind and behavioral control program designed to create top-secret escorts. The story then picks up in 2005. The Internet was abuzz with word that former White House reporter Jeff Gannon may, in fact, be Johnny Gosh. The claim, based on similar body markings and a lack of information about Gannon's early years. We have looked into uh, some records that came from Pennsylvania where uh, Mr. Gannon slash Guckert supposedly went to high school. Um, we've looked at photographs, and, and some of them match, some of them don't. There's, uh, there's several photographs that, that look strikingly like Johnny Gosh, and there are, there are some that don't even look like him at all. In February, Gannon was exposed. His name, actually James Gucker, a man with no journalism experience whatsoever, who had links to several gay escort services online. And joining us right now from Davie, Florida, the man at the center of the controversy. You're looking at him, former White House reporter Jeff Gannon, who watched our show and Bo's interview and wanted to come on and chat, and we appreciate that, sir. So, uh, Jeff, here's what Noreen Gosh said on our last show. Let's listen, and then I'm going to ask you to react. I do not know if Gannon is Johnny or not. Only a DNA test would provide that information conclusively. Jeff, one question for you. Let's get right to the point. Are you willing to take a DNA test and settle the controversy once and for all? Yes Abs or no? Absolutely, I would definitely take a DNA test, but that isn't even necessary because there's so much evidence to uh, available to disprove these accusations. That's a yes, then. Well, you are well he's saying yes. My friend Jeff yeah, is you know saying what? yes. As a lawyer, I can, I can, right. smell, I can smell a no, 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 no. You've so. got to understand something. My friend here, Jeff, who's come on our show today, didn't do anybody else's show, he's going to tell us the fact. Jeff, how old are you first off? I'm, I'm 48 years 48 old. 48 years old. My man Johnny Gashi there would be 35 years old. Lisa, Why are the you numbers... avoiding the question? No, 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 no. Question... He just said, he just said, hey, Jeff. You said you would take a DNA. I could set this whole thing up, but let's get to the point. Let's get to the point. The point is, by giving a DNA sample, there could be opening up some other avenues of things that I kind of know that you possibly could be involved. And I don't knock it. Again, if you want to go suck on a Johnny Pump or whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, you could do in this world. But the point is, Why all we're here for, speak, all Let we're here speak. for is to show that my friend Jeff is not Johnny Gush. Jeff? There are dozens of people who have known me most of my life that uh, could uh, definitely vouch for the fact that I am not this person. Look, what happened to this, this child and the, the suffering that his mother has endured is, is a tragedy. But it's also uh, been very difficult for, for me and my family, my real mother and, and, and members of my family, who have had to uh, listen to these uh, fabrications being spread uh, in newspapers, on television, and uh, on the Internet. All right, so I'm going to ask you a question, not Bo. Jeff, are you willing to take a DNA test, yes or no? Yes uh, or no? 
Yes, when I cut my finger yesterday, there was plenty of DNA available. You should have stopped by. What else you want, Lisa? Are the you man? his lawyer? No, boy? excuse me. Excuse he? me. He's my friend, my friend Jeff down here. Jeff, thank you for coming on the show again. You know what we're doing here? All this conspiracy stuff on the blogs, on all these internets, what we're doing is we're cutting to the chase now. Again, again, I don't understand why, you know, and you said it to me over the phone, and you said that you feel sorry for Noreen. Uh, you feel sorry for her missing her son, and you wouldn't put her through if you were her son. You're you said you're 40. In his mouth, he though. says he's 40. Jeff, let's hear from him. What did you think when you saw Noreen Gosh? Let him speak. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. I feel that, that this woman is being used by people who are trying to promote themselves as being investigators when they're not. They're fabricators. They're, uh, they've defamed me and put this woman through, uh, through unnecessary pain, uh, giving her hope where, where it, uh, it doesn't exist. Jeff, you tell them. And I'm going to tell you something right now, Jeff. If we, we want to shut everybody's mouths up, I'll arrange with you a little DNA, give me a little blood, a little survive, saliva, whatever you want to do, and then we'll get a little from Noreen, and we'll see, and we'll show them it doesn't match, and then everyone will keep their mouths shut and let you get on with your life. Because as far as I'm concerned, whatever you do in your life, if it's not a crime involved, whatever you want to be involved with, I don't really care. What I care about is people making up stories about other people and letting, making you live now on the edge of your life. Here's my question. Jeff, have you reached out to Noreen? What have you told her? I, I have not been in communication with this woman uh, because I can't uh, determine whether some of the emails I'm getting are actually this woman or not. There, there are hundreds of people that are contacting me about this story. I have no idea who they are. Nameless, faceless people making wild accusations. Do you have a pen and paper? Because I can give you her phone number oh. right after the show. Bo, are you, you on know, a payroll? No, I'm not on a payroll. But when a guy is falsely accused, you got to stand up for, for, for innocent people. You're an attorney. You understand that, too. The man is going to give his DNA. The man is 48 years old. Johnny Gosh would be 35 years old. He looks 48 years old. I'm 54 years old. He looks 48 years old. Why can't the guy be telling the truth? How about we talk about Gannon Gate? Jeff. Are you on any type of payroll, White House, oh. Republican? Absolutely, absolutely not. Never. Never. I have been in the past or, or now. Have, can you understand why people would think that you're not always telling the truth, your name isn't what you said it was, then the liberal blogs come out and say that there's a different story, you resign, not that there's anything wrong with it, but can you see that people may not know that you're telling the truth here? Well, I, I think uh, people who are listening to nameless, faceless people making accusations on the Internet, I'm sitting here in front of uh, your cameras today to, uh, to answer your questions. Where are these people? These people hide behind screen names mm -hmm. on the Internet. I'm here. I'm willing to give the evidence and tell my side of the story. Frankly, I haven't had the opportunity to tell my side of the story. Any time that I've made appearances, people have... Uh, uh, protested my appearance, tried to shout me down. I had to go six on one uh, two weeks ago right. at, at one event. Uh, it's it's my turn. Why don't people believe Jeff, me Jeff, as opposed to some of these other friend people? Bo, your friend Bo Dito believes you. I want to thank you very much for coming on the show today and clearing this thing up. We'll do this DNA thing, and I'll make my friend Lisa here see that you are, in fact, who you say you are. And Noreen Gosh, we did invite to come on to the show, but she refused. I want to thank Jeff Gannon and his lawyer, Bo Dito, for coming on the show. We'll do this DNA thing. We'll do this DNA thing. We'll do this DNA thing. There is another controversy brewing tonight. This one involves the Bush administration and the news media. It is the talk of Washington these days. It involves a man who was a regular in the White House press briefing room. He was free to ask President Bush and his press secretary questions on a regular basis. But it turns out he wasn't really a journalist and wasn't using his real name. And there is more to his past that is making a lot of people wonder what he was doing in the White House in the first place. Oswald, it is an amazing revelation in a bizarre story that all began back in 1982. That's when 12-year-old paper boy Johnny Gosh disappeared. He was on his paper route in West Des Moines at the time, and now his mother, who has never given up hope, says he's alive and well and came to visit her nearly two years ago. News Channel 8's Todd Megal talked with Mrs. Gosh today. She told him why she waited two years to speak out about Johnny's visits. I did see Johnny in March of 1997. 
I, he came here very late at night. Noreen Gosh says her son Johnny knocked on her apartment door without any warning almost two years ago. And now she's ready to tell her story. He's angry, he's bitter, he's um, full grown, but still has had the, not the benefit of a college education, job skills, any of that to get along in life with. So it made me very sad. But why wait two years to reveal this stunning news? Well, Gosh was in Omaha on Friday testifying in the civil trial of a man named Paul Benassi. For years, he's told the Gosh family he knows what happened to Johnny Gosh. Now Benassi is suing an Omaha businessman who Benassi says sexually assaulted him as a child. Noreen Gosh was on the stand confirming Benassi's story when the bombshell dropped. The attorney asked me if I had had any personal contact or, in fact, had seen or talked to my son. And I was under oath, so I had to answer. So what's happened to Johnny Gosh after all these years? His mother says he spent about an hour in her home describing his life. He's 28 years old now. What? He told me how he was kidnapped. Um, at first, he was so drugged that he didn't know where he was at, but he could then... Uh, relate some of the names of the people that were around him that he was able to latch on to names. He told me how they traveled all over the country. They were used for pornography, prostitution, compromising businessmen and politicians sexually. These kids were used in a royal fashion like none of us would ever dream of. So what does law enforcement think? Well, Polk County Attorney John Sarcone says if Mrs. Gosh believes the story, then he's not about to say anything different. But West Des Moines Police Captain Bob Rushing tells the Associated Press that Mrs. Gosh has told similar stories before, only to recant them later. I know that there are people in this town that don't believe it. They don't want to believe it, so they say Noreen Gosh is nuts. I don't care. I simply don't care. My first responsibility is to my son, because I'm the only one he has left. Todd Magel, News Channel.